Velká Británie je daleko a řekl bych, že ten jsem... Brexit se nás moc týkat nebude. Nicméně podíval jsem se do statistik. Ladies and gentlemen, pravý opak. Great Britain is far away, so it seems uh, we shouldn't be too concerned, but that's not true. This is uh, GDP per capita of selected countries. Austria, France, Italy, Spain, and the red line stands for Germany and the blue one for the Czech Republic. In 1990, we were told we would be on par with Germany in 20 years. In, indeed, we are at the level of Germany in 1990. And in, in fact, the distance between the two countries isn't diminishing, rather the contrary. The European Union uh, in general experienced its periods of growth and uh, followed by a period of stagnancy. While the the U.S. <clears throat> curve is quite flat, quite linear, the European Union, including our country, has had its ups and downs. This this is the point of signature of the Lisbon Treaty, which affected the subsequent development of the Union. The Brits have decided to solve the problem by Brexit. This certainly is going to affect the European Union. Uh, if you figure uh, the Union as a train, Uh, the leading countries, that's, uh, the, uh, those five stand for 70% of the EU's GDP, uh, uh, fo followed by countries such as Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, the Netherlands, and so forth. Eight countries, 19%, followed by countries such as the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Poland, Nine countries with 9% GDP trailed by the last six countries with 2% GDP. Now, if we take a look at the farming GDP, it's slightly different. Uh, and if we take the population, you can see the locomotives have 62% of the European population, followed by 12% for the second-class countries, and so forth. If, if you uh, relate that to uh, the, the population to the agricultural GDP, uh, its level in the locomotives. This is the chart of self-sufficiency in farm produce or in foodstuffs related to the population. Denmark, 263%, followed by uh, the Netherlands, 187%, down to the Czech Republic, 66%, and uh, the UK, only 53%. What happens if, if we disconnect one locomotive, that is, the UK? 
the farming uh, GDP will, will drop to only 55, uh, will only drop to 55, while the population will drop to 50. Who is going to balance it out? 2% is going, as, as we envisage, 2% is going to be taken by the UK, even if they have to pay customs duties and the like. Okay, let, uh, let us take the productivity of uh, uh, farm work. You, you can see that the Danish productivity is 510, followed by Belgium, 424, down to, the, uh, to Czechia, 122, Slovakia, 102, and at the bottom is Bulgaria and Romania with 30 and 22 percent, respectively. So the difference is formidable. One farmer in Denmark generates the same production as four farmers in the Czech Republic, 15 in Poland and 25 in Romania. So who is going to balance out the deficit? Not the leaders. If we take a look at, at, at the last few, they would not be able to carry the burden. So let us take uh, the Visegrad countries. They stand for 10 percent of farming GDP of the European Union. If we take 30 percent out, if we reduce it to 7, we would be able to make for the deficit. Now we've been talking about the faulty foodstuffs from Poland and reduced subsidies from EU. That's no news today. Taking a look at individual commodities for France, Germany and Austria, the surplus of, of cereals, surplus of meat and milk. We are going to reduce the production. Why? Because the supermarkets are managed from their home countries and uh, the produce is easy to transport to our country. It would be more difficult to transport the same to Bulgaria. How vulnerable are we? Uh, GDP in agriculture makes 104 billion, and 30% uh, of that is covered by subsidies. We suffered a reduction in the 1990s. This is a comparison of uh, 2017 to 1989. Dairy production, 61 percent. Production of uh, livestock, 48 percent. Cereals, 81 percent. Pigs, 32 percent. So, how to go on? Should we, should we oppose further reductions of, of farming? Yes. But uh, can we ex 
begs to be successful. Oh, remember the train. We cannot expect much. We, we can expect the subsidies in Czechia to be either reduced or abolished completely, while the subsidies will continue in other countries of the EU. That would be de detrimental to our agriculture. Who is going to succeed? Those who, those capable of radical reduction of costs at least by 30 percent. How? To automate as much as possible or to introduce new technologies. To go from farms to uh, greenhouses. There are such greenhouses already in the world. This is what it looks like. Hmm. This is such a farm in New Jersey, USA. which produces about as much quantity of vegetables from uh, 0.6 hectare as uh, check fields on 230 hectares. Let's take another point of view. It is estimated that the average temperature should grow by 2% till 2050. That will significantly reduce the quantity of available water. Industry is consuming 19% of uh, available water. Uh, households consume 11, and uh, the rest is used by agriculture. That, again, speaks in favor of uh, greenhouses, where water can be recycled and a lot of it saved. The UN has declared a new religion, and that is environment. The, the framework agreement has been ratified by 186 countries. What does that imply for the Czech Republic? We, sh we, sh we should reduce the, the CO2 surplus down to zero by 2050. In the Czech Republic, that would mean a reduction of emissions by 14.5 million tons by 2030. Trans of, of this transport takes about 16.5 million tons, while agriculture takes 1.2 million. If, uh, if we shift to electric uh, propulsion of vehicles, then we will not be able to drive much because there will not be enough electricity. This is where we import from. It's a waste of energy, and we are not going to be able to afford that. So that uh, brings us to vertical holes with local transport, 
they should be dispersed throughout the territory of the country. Basically, we will eat what we, uh, where we grow it. And uh, that is relatively independent on climate. You can, uh, you can produce in the Sahara as well as in Greenland. You can ignore seasons. The vertical holes, uh, greenhouses, in, involve no chemistry, basically. They are closed, so there will be hardly any pests. It will be clean. The Americans filled the produce into bags uh, filled with nitrogen to minimize waste. We presume that in the future, vertical holes will produce everything, not only vegetables, fruit, wine, linen, everything. And I dare say that they'll produce meat or surrogate of meat, which will be invented by them. Looking back to the history, Slushevitsa at 1981 built a hall with controlled atmosphere and there was a hydroponic grain production with 3.2 crops a year. That was the first vertical hall in the world. Then the system sort of slipped and when Fukushima exploded and it was impossible to grow in the fields, the Japanese started using this system and today after 10 years they have systems which economically are working. Of course those first models are usually working with a loss. We have high quality researchers but we need to foster new species to be planted in halls. We need to come with new technologies, fixations, chemistry, parameter of climate, etc. It's a lot of work. Today, main career are USA, Japan, Great Britain, but I think that we can do that as well. One vertical hall I've shown you in New Jersey is 50 times 60 meters and produces 800 tons of vegetables a year. Here, 13,000 people could live on that. So, Czech Republic would need 750 vertical halls for complete supply of vegetables, like Brno, 600,000 inhabitants would have 46 halls. Where to get money for vertical halls? Because, because it's not cheap, it's worth 1 billion. So for 750 halls, 750 billions. Who's got it? For instance, Czech National Bank. Czech National Bank in 2017 spent uselessly 950 billions to cut the exchange rate to 27 crowns. So, if there is a good will, 750 billion should be found. By the way, Czech National Bank owns 3 trillion 120 billion. And what about the European Union? Christine Lagarde, the president of ECB, declared that she'll continue in quantitative releasing and which is basically money printing, and she'll add up 
20 billion euros, it means 500 billions per month into the circulation. Part of the money should be used to buy company bonds and that should help to cut emissions. Who will be a recipient of this money? Only few farmers, because there are certain preconditions. If you want to credit with the bank, the equity is 20%. Equity is your own money, and 70 to 80% will be given by the bank. If we look at GDP of the Czech Republic, which is 104 billion crowns. I can't imagine putting together 750 billion. So, how to do that? There was a similar situation in the 60s because farmers didn't have money to buy mechanization. And, uh, Co-ops earned money for mechanization, and I believe that situation simply repeats itself. Large industrial companies will have agricultural protection in halls. Why in halls? Because industrial protection will be curbed. There will be empty halls, and what to do with them? Companies will look for protection, and this is what they could do in their empty holes. Transformation to vertical farms concerns the whole EU, fighting the lack of water and transportation limitations are the task which for us farmers will be imposed. And to survive, we have to invest into intensification of agricultural production. So what's the way out? You need to join forces with industrial companies, because we are those who can do and they have their homes. Thank you for